Hey everyone, my name is Hamaj Neil. Welcome back to another mechanical keyboard video. So it's been roughly a few months since my previous KBD75 V2 build, and I really wanted to build another one of these premium keyboards because it's really fun, and it seemed like you guys really enjoyed watching me go through the whole thing last time. So welcome back, everyone. I've been practicing a lot with more budget builds and builds for clients, so I definitely feel a lot more confident with building keyboards. With that, let's get straight to the parts. Okay, let's start off with the case. This is a grey KBD Fans Tofu 65. It's made out of CNC machined aluminum and it is honestly stunning. The edges are super clean, it feels extremely smooth to the touch and most of all, it has this weight to it which makes it feel extremely premium. This is also thanks to the shiny brass weight screwed behind on the bottom. It's not something that you'll see every day when using it but it definitely makes a huge difference in both the acoustics and the overall feel of the keyboard. It also has the KBD Fans logo engraved in the bottom right corner and it just looks incredible when paired with the grey design of the case. And again, you might be thinking that having a weight attached is a little bit extra for a keyboard, but attaching a weight to a keyboard helps to make the keyboard sound more thocky and also reduces any hollowness it might have. And plus, I mean, it just looks cool. So with the case comes a really nice PCB. This is the KBD67 V2 PCB and it honestly just looks beautiful. I've never actually seen in person such an aesthetic looking PCB. The black and gold design, even though I'm not going to see this once it's fully built, is truly something just beautiful. Then we have the plate. This is an aluminum plate and honestly, I really regret not getting a brass one. I don't know why I got the aluminum one. I bought this quite a while ago, but whatever. Let's just go with it. I'm sure it'll still sound great. Next up, we have the switches. For today's build, I'm going to be using the Telios V2 switches. These are allegedly one of the, if not, smoothest linears on the market, so I had to try them out for myself. I've been hearing a lot of positive and negative discussions regarding the switches. Some people say it's overpriced, some people say it's just the best out there, and I wanted to give my own thoughts after trying them out. These are priced at 10 US dollars for 10 switches, so 1 US dollar per switch. It is a very high tier switch, and ugh, man, I'm just excited to try these out. Okay. And lastly, we have our keycaps. Set. This is the GMK Phosphorus set. It's a beautiful cyan and grey design, which I'm a huge fan of on any keyboard. These were designed by Morden, and as soon as I saw them, I had to get them for myself. I think these will look great with the grey color case that I have today. Alright, so as usual, let's begin by lubing the switches. We of course start off by dismantling all of the switches. I would usually put all of the parts into bowls, but I've recently purchased a lube station from KBD Fans. It's okay, honestly. It's not the best one out there, but it definitely helps to speed up the process. But it's blue and cheap and the shipping is fast, so yeah. But even if you do have a loop station, I recommend that you get two bowls, one for the springs and one for the top housings for easier organization. I'll get into that later. And once again, I always use a switch opener. This is an aluminum one from, you guessed it, KBD fans. It makes opening switches super convenient and way easier. Totally recommend it if you're going to lube your own switches. Dismantling the switches can definitely be a bit of a long process, so I definitely recommend that you get some music on or a YouTube video just to keep yourself, you know, sane and so you don't go crazy. But after dismantling all of them, we now have to begin lubing them. So how you lube a switch will depend on a few factors. Mainly, it depends on what type of switch it is. Is it a tactile switch or is it a linear switch? Different switches will use different types of lube and will also require different quantities and techniques. In this case, we're going to be lubing linear switches and I want them to be buttery smooth. So I'm going to be using a thick lube called Crytox 205 G0. And I only really recommend this for linear switches. So I start off by lubing the bottom housing. I get a decent amount of Crytox on a brush, clean it off and then brush two to three times against the walls here. Then I dip it into the hole in the middle and then go around the hole and tap on the bottom where the stem will land. And you repeat that for every single switch. Sometimes you may over apply lube and that's okay, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure that you get a clean brush and go over it again to even out the lube. As for the stems, I tend to start off by lubing the front parts with the legs, making sure to evenly coat the faces and legs, also making sure to lubricate the bottom of the legs. After that, I brush the sides two to three times each and then the back. You should ideally try to avoid getting any big puddles of lube onto the switch and it should instead be a nice even coat throughout. It takes a little bit of practice and patience, a lot of patience, but honestly it really isn't that hard. And now to bag lube the springs. To speed up the process, I usually get a small Ziploc bag and stuff all the springs inside. After that, I apply some Crytox on the sides, close the bag and shake it. This will ensure a nice even spread of Crytox onto all of the springs. Are you winning so Oh god. Wait, that So after lubing the springs, we now have to start reassembling the switches. 
One thing I have wanted to try for a while, however, is filming. Filming a switch is adding a small sheet of plastic film in between the top and bottom housing. This helps to make the switch more secure, it reduces wobble, and it also helps to make the acoustics far more pleasing. For today's build, I'm going to be using DeskKey's Switch Film from KBD Fans. This isn't something you have to do with switches, but if you are going to be spending hours and lots of money on a keyboard, you might as well spend an extra $5 to $10 on some films to give your keyboard that extra touch. Just do note that it can take a little extra time to film your switches, so once again, patience is key. Oh my god, I'm actually going to shoot myself. And one last thing I like to do is also add a little lube on the top housing to ensure the smoothest linear experience possible. Just a light tap, you don't need to add too much, just a little bit. So with the switches done, we can now move on to the stabilizers. So with every KBD Fans DIY kit, you get a set of OEM stabilizers. And like I discussed in the last video, these are pretty much trash. So I'm going to be using screw-in genuine Cherry MX stabilizers instead. I know there's a lot of other better premium ones out there, but this one works just fine in my opinion. But I'm definitely going to try out some better ones in the future. So for just a little bit of context, PCB mounted stabilizers can either be clipped on or screwed on. Screwed-in stabilizers will help Help to reduce a rattle as it'll be more securely tightened onto the PCB, making it sound a lot more clean and will also help to make any large key like a spacebar feel a lot smoother. So as usual, we have to start off by clipping the stabilizers and then lubing them. It just takes two simple snips and it will greatly improve the sound of your stabilizers by a lot. I'm using a Gundam model cutter I got from my friend, but you can also just use scissors if you want. So after clipping all of the stabilizers, we can now move on to lubing them. Another thing that I've changed in my process is what lube I use. I used to use dye electric grease, but it made my stabilizers feel really mushy and greasy. I guess that's kind of the point. But I'm now using Crytox 205G0, a generous amount of 205G0, to lube the stabilizers. Because I still want to get the smoothness, but I hate that slimy, mushy feeling that I get when I use dye electric grease. So I highly recommend that you use Crytox instead. So after lubing and clipping the stabilizers, I now have to band-aid my PCB, or in this case, just put tape on it. Band-aiding or taping a PCB helps to, again, reduce any unnecessary movement from the stabilizer and will help to secure it in place. This process can also just take a little while, so once again, take your time while doing this, please. Make sure to test your stabilizers after setting them up. It can help to quality check the build and see if there's anything that needs adjusting. In my case, I needed to redo some of the tape because it didn't fully cover the contact between the stabilizer and the PCB, and I also had to apply just a little bit more lube. And with the stabilizers complete, we can now begin soldering the PCB. Alright, so after working on my previous keyboard, the whole soldering process has become a lot easier for me. My consistency improved and I have become pretty efficient, at least I think so. I'm still not a huge fan of this process, it feels pretty permanent and desoldering any PCB is an actual nightmare. I really hope that we can get to a point where we get more hot swap PCBs in the market. It would make it way more beginner friendly and just easier for the majority of enthusiasts, especially when they want to swap out switches. With that said, there is a very satisfying feeling of successfully soldering all of your switches onto a PCB. For me, it makes me feel very proud of my work and when done properly, it can look really nice. And with all of that done, we can finally start putting things together. Even with the brass weight, I am afraid of the case sounding hollow, so I am going to be adding some foam into the case. I purchased this large roll of foam from my hardware store. It's pretty thin and light, which to be honest, isn't the most effective type of foam. A lot of people purchase much denser types of foam, which are definitely more effective, but my roll of foam has been extremely useful thus far. Installing it is honestly really easy. Just cut it to size, put it in, and then screw the PCB onto the case. And all we have to do now is put the keycaps onto the switches. Subscribe to Homogeneo. Not, 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 not.
All right, so at the time of recording this, I've been using this keyboard for around two weeks and it is honestly amazing. It's by far my favorite build I've made so far. I do think that I want to try get Duroc stabilizers as even though there isn't a lot of rattle in this keyboard, my spacebar definitely feels just a tiny bit rattly and I'm wondering if the stabilizers will really change the feel of the spacebar. Aside from that, the filmed and lubed Telos V2 are actually heaven to type on. They are buttery smooth and they have a really nice sound profile. I'm definitely going to be making a Switch review on those soon. And I also think the case looks incredible and the overall design is just so clean aesthetic and I'm really satisfied with this build. Anyways guys that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did please do consider subscribing and if you want to support this channel feel free to join my discord server or support me on patreon and with that I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.